Hey there, everyone. Good Monday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here with Weather for Weather Geeks. It's the Mahoning and Shenango Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, and we have no shortage of things to talk about this evening. First things first, since we lasted Weather Geeks on Thursday, of course, uh, Helene uh, was a historic storm, unfortunately, for many areas away from the coast. Of course, it made landfall in Florida. But the worst weather, the biggest impacts, the most damage to lives and property have been farther north in the Carolinas. My precipitation color bar only goes to 20 inches, but down here in western North Carolina where you see some of this purple, there's been more than 20 inches worth of rain over the last handful of days, especially, of course, as Helene's remnants push through. Um, and it, no doubt by now a lot of you have seen the pictures and video. It's just incredible. It looks apocalyptic. Um, entire towns basically washed away. Uh, Tremendous damage to infrastructure. I-40 between Tennessee and North Carolina washed out. It's going to take forever for the rebuilding process to be completed uh, for the infrastructure down here across eastern Tennessee and especially into western North Carolina. So, yeah, lots and lots of rain from Helene. This was a, <clears throat> a setup that, um, you know, it was kind of a worst-case scenario. You had Helene, you had an upper-level low coming in that sort of attracted Helene at such an angle that all the moisture was funneled into those east-facing slopes of the Appalachians. Of course, the Appalachian Mountains come down here like this, and all the moisture got funneled right up here, uplift, upslope flow, and just moisture, the, the moisture that was wrung out was just incredible. Now, back here at home, of course, we have not dealt with anything remotely like that in terms of the heavy rain, but when we look at the amount of rain we've seen over the last week compared to the average, um, it's been a distinct pattern change, of course. So we went through a very dry stretch in early September, but over the last week or so, uh, you know, some of us have seen 200% or so worth of our normal precipitation during the last week of September. Over the last 24 hours, we haven't added much to the rainfall totals in our northern viewing area. The rain's been more persistent in our southern viewing area today. It's rained just about all day in East Liverpool and up towards Nagley, Rogers, over towards Lisbon, West Point, uh, Highland Town, Selineville, places like that. Uh, so some rain gauges down there, no doubt, uh, approaching a half an inch uh, this evening, whereas you get up towards Youngstown and especially north of I-80, it's hardly rained at all today. It's just been kind of a cloudy ho-hum day today. Now, of course, uh, we get our official observations for our area at the Youngstown Warren Regional Airport in Vienna in Trumbull County. And as of the climate report that was issued by the National Weather Service for today, that report gets issued right around 5.20 p.m. with an update again around midnight. But the initial climate report uh, put a goose egg on the map. We're on the board for today. I think when they do their update closer to midnight tonight, there will be some measurable measurable rainfall amounts at the Youngstown Airport. But with the zero today, our official number thus far at the airport uh, in the closing hours of September, 3.93. And believe it or not, that gives us a surplus for the month. Really remarkable considering how dry the first three weeks of the month were. But it's rained every single day over the last week. And, you know, the, the, the amounts have not been earth shattering, but 1.2 last Tuesday, almost an inch last Wednesday a little more than a half an inch yesterday. And again, we're going to add a little bit to those totals this evening, officially in Vienna. Now, temperature-wise for the month, we're going to finish 3.1 degrees above the average I posted on social media earlier. We haven't had a cooler-than-average September in a decade. And September of 2014 was only cooler than average by about a half a degree. We haven't had a, uh, what I would call a legit cooler-than-average September by more than a degree, say, uh, since 2012. It's been 12 years since we've had a what I would call a cool September here locally. And so, you know, again, we didn't have any 90s this month, but we had almost two consecutive weeks of above average high temperatures. And with the clouds that we've had over the last week or so, we've had some pretty warm nights. It's been kind of muggy for the end of September. And so we haven't had a, a crisp night in a little while, thanks to the clouds and the elevated humidity. All right, looking forward to the month of October. This is the final uh, prediction from the Climate Prediction Center, part of the uh, National Weather Service for temperatures in October. It looks like there's going to be a Mondo Ridge centered out here in the western U.S., especially across the uh, Rocky Mountains, for a fair amount of October, and that should make it a pretty darn warm October compared to the average in Denver and Vegas and you know places like that. I think the best chance of a pretty humdrum October temperature-wise will be across the southeast. And I think for us, odds favor it ending up warmer than the average. But I think it's going to be kind of a back-and-forth month. 
as you would expect in October. We're getting into that time of the year that the cold fronts tend to get a little stronger as you get into October. And I think we're going to have a sequence of, of cold fronts that roll through during this month that will give us some bouts of chilly weather, but it will probably come out in the wash as warmer than average by maybe not a real significant margin. Precipitation-wise in October, you know, when I showed you this initial Climate Prediction Center outlook for October about 10 days ago, I speculated that they would expand the area of dry uh, weather favored in October. And, and they did indeed with their final October outlook today. So a good chunk of the nation's midsection should be very dry in October. I kind of suspect we're going to be dry as well. Sure, it's going to rain like it does every October, but uh, I would not be surprised if October ended up being a drier than average month here locally and especially out to our west. But it is a gloomy evening, some light rain, some drizzle. Believe it or not, this is still the circulation, the remnant circulation from Helene. No longer any sort of tropical entity whatsoever, but the gloomy weather will continue overnight into tomorrow morning. I think there's going to be some fog issues tomorrow morning. Maybe not as much locally, but just off to our west. Anyone commuting up towards Cleveland tomorrow morning, maybe Akron, and especially west of Akron towards Mansfield, you might have some fog issues uh, the farther west in Ohio you go. I think because the stratus clouds are going to be stuck overhead for a lot of the night tonight, that's actually going to prevent the fog from taking hold in most of our TV viewing area, but where the sky may try to clear for a time tonight, out towards Cleveland, Mansfield, the I-71 corridor, um, I think you have a better chance of some areas of dense fog. But as we go into October 1st on our Tuesday, uh, any patchy drizzle should fade away in the morning, leaving us with clouds for a lot of the day. It's not going to be a great looking day, but it's going to be drier than today overall. Best chance for showers will come with our cold front tomorrow night, close to midnight, and then clouds should break for plentiful sunshine Wednesday. What a change we have coming in the wake of this front. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine for late in the day Wednesday, and plenty of sunshine in our Thursday and Friday forecasts as well. And this may be one of the final times this season that I'll be showing you this graphic because I think the dew points have become a non-story starting on Wednesday, especially as we get into the afternoon, maybe kind of muggy at the start of the day Wednesday. But by Wednesday afternoon, the dew points are crashing down into the 40s and lower 50s. And the dew points just stay in the 50s, it looks like, for the foreseeable future. The, tomorrow may be the last kind of a day where we have dew points in the middle 60s, maybe for the rest of the uh, season. Now, that being said, does this look like any sort of abnormally cool pattern going forward? No, the air mass is going to dry out, but it still looks largely warmer than the average. Of course, we're getting into the time of the year that our averages are falling quickly, but as we go into that first week of October, our average highs are mostly in the middle and upper 60s. Uh, we'll do 77 on, uh, what would that be, Saturday? 77 on Friday. Uh, Saturday's 71, Sunday's 74. A homecoming at YSU this weekend, uh, the Youngstown Peace Race on Sunday. Anything going on outdoors this weekend, we should be in pretty good shape. Uh, a cold front probably heads our way next Sunday night into Monday. The next in a series of cold fronts that I, I think will push through the area during the first half of October that will occasionally knock temperatures back. But I don't see any sort of November preview anytime soon. I don't see a real hard freeze risk anytime in early October. So, uh, you know, our average date of our first frost and especially freeze of the season isn't usually until mid-October. So we got a ways to go until we're, you know, at our average date. Um, but uh, I don't see any sort of early season threats or early October threats, at least the way it looks right now. We'll do it again Tuesday evening on the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. Thanks for watching on this Monday and have a great rest of your night.